And now I'd like to introduce uh, Ted Sorensen, who I've known for a long time and who's been one of the great uh, servants of this country, uh, both in his years with President Kennedy and in things he's done since then. His most recent book, um, Counselor, A Life on the Edge of History, I read last spring, often sitting in the sun. I used to play tennis with Ted a lot, and just to comment about Ted's tennis, uh, it's not straightforward. There are many, many cuts, and it was a most challenging game. But I was sitting in the sun reading Ted's book last spring, and it's a super new book. Anyway, Ted, what thoughts do you have? Well, thank you, uh, Fritz. Uh, uh, my uh, tennis uh, game was a result of my uh, years in Washington. I had a lot of spin. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, uh, I... Uh, thank the Brennan Center for its initiative, and I congratulate Emily Berman on her uh, magnificent piece of research and uh, work. I am here in support of this initiative because I share the Brennan Center's concern about increasing secrecy in Washington, which uh, is the antithesis of a democracy, government of, by, and for the people. It is the antithesis of Congress being the people's representative. If Congress cannot do its oversight to duties, it, if it cannot learn uh, what has actually been going on uh, within the executive branch, and particularly in the White House, then uh, democracy uh, will fail. So I'm here today as a former presidential advisor who has never believed in the doctrine of executive privilege. It has, as Emily's work uh, shows, almost no judicial uh, uh, grounding. <laughs> and to the extent there is any at all, it is based on the assumption not only that the president is entitled to candid advice, which I strongly agree with, but that he will not get candid advice if his advisors find that their uh, words could be subject to uh, review by members of Congress or even the judiciary. And I'm here to say that that's nonsense. During the years I served President Kennedy, when asked for advice on any issue, however controversial, I was as frank and honest as I could be at all times without regard to whether what I was saying was sensitive, might be politically vulnerable, might be exposed in the public by a congressional committee or a judicial hearing or otherwise, because I felt my duty, and I believe every presidential advisor worthy of the name feels that his duty is to give the president the best possible advice that serves the national interest, and by the way, the client of the White House counsel, forgotten, <coughs> apparently forgotten by some, the client of the White House counsel is not the President of the United States. The client of the White House counsel is the American people, and that's uh, to whom he owes his obligation. So uh, I would uh, think that the only uh, substantive reason cited by one uh, court, namely that the president is entitled to the most candid advice from his advisors, uh, falls flat because I believe advisors that are worthy of the job are automatically, instinctively going to give the president their most candid advice. Indeed, I walked in to the Oval Office uh, one evening in uh, 19... 63, and stopped in my tracks because there were lights just as bright as the ones 
shining on me now, and there were clearly one or more television cameras in the room, and I thought there must be some mistake. And Robert Kennedy, the Attorney General, was there about to join the meeting and said, no, it's all right, it's arranged. And that turned out to be the uh, group that later uh, shot the film called Eyes on the Prize, the history of the Civil Rights Movement, because we were about to discuss the situation in Alabama, the strategy for dealing with George Wallace and his uh, threat to stand in the doorway. I have to say the presence of television lights and cameras, the knowledge that what I was saying on a quite sensitive controversial issue would sooner or later be uh, publicly uh, distributed, didn't uh, even cross my mind, much less inhibit me. I, the issue was so important, and I felt so strongly about it that I was giving the president my best possible advice, and I have every reason to believe that uh, other presidential advisors would do the same, and therefore there is no substantive need for the so-called executive privilege, adding still another wall of secrecy in this town. Well, Ted, thank you. Thank you very, very much.